So we're going to do pressure, we're going to do fluid pressure um, with the help of geezers. Tell me about Great Geyser first, because that's the, that's the biggest one, hence Great Geyser. Yeah, so the Great Geyser is uh, the, the largest one that we've got here in the Geothermal Park and it doesn't erupt very often anymore. It tends to erupt after, uh, after earthquakes is what I've been told. It used to erupt a lot more regularly and during the Victorian times they would chuck soap flakes or rocks into it and then they'd be constricting the tube and that constriction would set the geezer off but some unfortunate tourists got her petticoats caught apparently <laughs> and, um, and was killed. So they stopped doing it after that and that's when the fences kind of came into play. So I haven't seen it go off but apparently it does go off occasionally. This one does go off, so uh, we're going to hope to catch that um, next time round. Next time round. So the one that goes off is called stocker, it means the churn, and it goes off regularly every 10 to 20 minutes or so. Sometimes it's the big one, which is about 30 metres high. The Great Geyser would be 100 metres high, but sometimes it's slightly smaller. I was encouraging people to watch it at least twice because they missed the first one. But this that is only one quite that, that was pretty big. Okay, that was quite big. Yeah, okay. that one was pretty big. So this is only one of three places in the world where you get geysers that erupt like this on a regular basis. So you get here, Rotorua in New Zealand, and at Yellowstone National Park. So I think it's one of the most special places in Iceland. I, I think it's a good example of physics. It's fluid pressure, isn't it? So we're gonna. Uh, I want you just to while you listen to this bit, just to imagine all the particles, because anything like this is good evidence for the particle theory, okay, or kinetic theory, as we should really be calling it. The idea that everything's made of particles that are moving, uh, so they have kinetic energy, and kinetic theory, and they have a certain amount of attractive force to them. So uh, that, that's what I think about when I think about this. But yeah, go for how they work. What's that, Steve? Uh, that's just <laughs> my lens is just. Do you want to unsee? <laughs> I don't know. I've got I've got lens. On. <laughs> um, <laughs> we'll see how it goes. It, it's already don't almost clear again. <laughs> Yeah, so the way that the geysers work is you've got um, an underground chamber, which on Stocco is, I believe, 20 metres under the ground, and you've got a narrower tube going from that chamber to the surface. Oh, right. That chamber underneath the ground is getting heated by the rocks. Yeah. Because it's under the ground, with the pressure of the water above it, it's going to superheat, so it gets above 100 degrees C. And eventually the pressure building up from that superheating water is going 100, over 100 degrees. That force is pushing the weight of the water above it out of the way, and it explodes up as superheated steam. Then it refills, and the whole process starts again. Oh, wow, nice one. You get it just blowing up? Yeah. Nice. Oh, get a nice little picture of that. Yeah. It's blowing up, that. Yeah. 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 I'm going to try and keep the camera on here. Talk a little bit about the particle theory in a kind of GCSE sense. Pressure fluids is a consequence of all those little particles bumping into the uh, size of the container that it's in. When we talk about gas pressure, we talk about the speed of those particles. So the greater the temperature, the faster they're moving, the more energy they have, and the more often and the more force they collide with the sides of those containers. So as the geothermal fluid heats, the particles speed up, they gain more pressure and therefore there's more force until it can overcome the weight of the water above it and that's when the geyser erupts. Um, they are hot springs I think because they've got water in them, there's nothing, when it exits the ground as steam, that's a fumarole. Yeah. If it exits the ground, oh. <laughs> I don't know if you saw the camera jump a little bit but that, that was because <laughs> I jumped right. But hopefully that helps you imagine that fluid uh, and if you think about those particles inside there, they do want to be together, they're attracted to each other, everything has this force of attraction but because of the energy, um, they, they, when they leave this, because the extra energy they have and there's lower pressure outside, then it becomes steam and Claire says superheated steam because underneath the ground it can be water at that higher pressure, it can be water at a higher temperature. I just want to point out something if you come to Iceland, don't be this person. Don't be this person that's left that, that drinks can. That was awesome, I hope it helped you understand a little bit about kinetic theory and understand fluid pressure. Uh, this is Claire Udell, who um, is a, a guide with NSD. Oh, it's National School Tours, I apologise. So should we start again? <laughs> so that was awesome, <laughs> I hope that helped you understand. I'm gonna to have to edit my kind of chat. I, I always stop and start, and you, you're, yeah. once you get going, you're off. I'm don't be that person, and don't be the de-glove person. Okay, there's the people you don't want to be. It was just grim, <laughs> but um, 
We've had an absolutely wonderful time. Oh, and um, we just want to plug Claire, if you want to follow her on Instagram, it's not just geography either. No, no, it's not just geography. I'm also a climbing coach and do a lot of traveling the world. It's uh, at Claire Udale, which is C-L-A-I-R-E-Y-O-U-D-A-L-E. And my Twitter handle is the same. And it's at the bottom of the screen as well, and in the description. If you can put an Insta link on a YouTube, in there. Thanks for watching Grow Physics.